what's up, folks? Welcome back to another 3D Hangout. My name is Noah Ruiz. I'm a designer here at Adafruit, and joining me every week is my brother Pedro. Good morning, everybody. I'm Pedro's Creative Tech here at Adafruit, and every week we're here to share 3D printed projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. That's right. This year we combine 3D printing and CNC milling sometimes to make inspirational projects for you folks. Hello, everybody in the Discord chat room. We are hanging out. So if you'd like to join us during the show, you can check out the Discord chat room. It is located at discord.gg slash Adafruit. Ish. Come on in and join everybody hanging out in the chat rooms, not just Discord, but on the YouTubes, Twitch, LinkedIn. Yeah, give everybody a shout out while I adjust our Twitter temperature, our stuff here. All right, giving shout outs to all of the usuals hanging out. We got <laughs> Dewester, Skier, got Mr. Certainly Bruce, we got Rosin. Hello. Stuart Riggs. Hello. Cup of coffee. Perfect Hello. name. I could use some more. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll give you more shout outs throughout the show. <laughs> I'm going to do kind of the intro. Okay, welcome to episode 338, or maybe it's 339, uh, entitled, what was the title? Wooden Keycaps, the Rat Catcher, and Tentacles. On today's show, we have, we're celebrating eight years of making. We have a special coupon code. We'll look more on the coupon code. Yay! We are celebrating, well, we're not celebrating. We're promoting this Halloween <laughs> Hackfest contest by, by DigiKey and Hackaday. We have some jobs. We have a new project this week. We got some prototyping. We got some shop talk. Community makes. All this and more on, you guessed it, 3D Hangouts. Yay! Eight years of making. Yeah, so I guess we'll start off with the eight years of making. Um, to celebrate, we got this 10% off coupon code. That's right. So if you put in, put anything in your Adafruit shopping cart, you'll get 10% off your order at checkout. Be sure to enter code NPTHANKS. Expires at 11.59 p.m. tonight. So make sure to stock up on all the goodies to make your awesome projects come to life. Yeah, and you might want to wait till tonight because I'm waiting for some new products to get in stock. <laughs> so check them out. And the more things you, you buy, this is some things you can get for free. So let me run through the deals that are ongoing. If you spend $99 or more, you'll get a half size for a proto. That's that awesome, lovely breadboard. And if you spend $149, you get the breadboard plus a randomly selected STEM QT board. If you have an account with Adafruit, make sure you don't get the same one twice. For orders that are $200 or more, you get free ground shipping for UPS, and that's continental US only. You'll get the STEM IQT board and the Perma Proto half size board. And for orders that are $2.99 or more, you get the ground shipping, STEM IQT board, the half size Perma Proto, and a Circuit Playground Express. This round shaped board with all of the sensors and goodies that you could ever use. That you could ever use. <laughs> you could, something like that. All right. Let's talk about the jobs board. There are some new job postings. So if you are a maker or an employer looking for some makers with maker skills, you can check out the jobs board at jobs.adafruit.com. This week, I'm seeing some new posts here. Open hardware summit chair is still available. We have an exhibit maintenance technician for Discovery World in oh. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Hey. I know someone in Wisconsin. Check that out if you want to switch up gears. And a supply chain specialist for modular robotics in Boulder, Colorado. Don't forget this really awesome creator rock star over at DigiKey. Still seeking, and it's a full-time gig. You can see the little tag here. There's a remote, there's a full-time in the contracts. They're all very well, um, I don't know, described. So check them out if you're in the market for a new job or some new makers. Yeah, lots of fun jobs out there. All right. Um, Going down the daily list. news. <laughs> Uh, if you're interested in some daily content, check out uh, adafruitdaily.com and subscribe to all the different categories such as Python on hardware, 3D printing, biohacking, and IoT monthly. Check those out. For once every week, once a week newsletter is focused on new products. Check that out at adafruit.com slash newsletter. You can get uh, subscribed to the, uh, the new products uh, newsletter. Find out all the new products that are added on the weekly. What else do I do? <laughs> I think that's it. That's Looking that's at the it. notes here, I believe that is it. Yeah. Don't forget to sign up for the next Adabox. I don't think you have a graphic for that. I but don't, sorry. 
it could go to the website adavox.com because it is it is happening. The boards are being produced, product, producenced. <laughs> They're being produced. The prototypes are, are getting put together. We got, Ooh, really we got fun our Halloween fall themed. theme going on here, so it's definitely going to be a super fun one for the, the crystals holidays. And the rocks in the back are there. It's yeah, great. Yeah, you definitely don't want to miss on this one. It Ooh. looks so cool. Wow. Look at this, like, and then cue the shirts. lawnmowers going on. Yeah, that's how you know it's live, 3D <laughs> hangouting. All right, let's go ahead and I think that's it, right? Circuit Python I meetings don't know. happen every week. Oh, right, week. sorry. I'm the, it's eight years, man. It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> Circuit Python meetings happen every Monday, typically on a Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. This is where the, uh, the Circuit Python devs and the community come together and chat about what's going on with Circuit Python. You can tune in and the uh, you can tune in live or you can listen to the archive that's posted in all the different podcasting services and also on YouTube. So check those out every Monday at at uh, at two p.m. They're 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 done in the uh, the Discord chat room, the Discord server rather. And uh, to to get an invited there, it's discordgg adafruit. So you can check it out. Hello, everybody. I think that's the last one. All right. Yes, right. it is eight years. I know, mind blown as well. I think it's the I longest eight years. Yeah. place we've been at. Yeah, we haven't been doing 3D Hangouts for eight years, but we've been doing eight different projects yeah. for eight years. Um, so definitely so check out in all of the guides we've been working on. It's over 300 guides you can check out. I think we've done everything at least five times or more. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's still some new. Like I haven't done any wooden keycaps, so that's fun. So this week's project, um, it's it's CNC milling. I got my little CNC mill. We created some CNC milled keycaps out of wood. I got really interested in making uh, these keycaps out of wood. So hey, bu hey buddy, it's our dog. So we, you know we thought we'd make uh, a bunch of these keycaps. So it was it was quite of a fun learning lesson in uh, CNC milling. It is a a job that requires um, a custom fixture in order to do uh, both sides because with CNC milling, you can't really do undercuts. Um, so I had to design a custom fixture uh, to, make, um, to make the top side. So what we have here is we have these little square cubes that we start off with as the first operation. So this is the stem and the cross that will fit any of these uh, Cherry MX compatible switches. Here I have the kale box switches. They're, they're, they're kind of designed better for these, like they fit better. So um, getting that tolerances to work out was a little bit of a, was a, a little bit of a, how do I do that? <laughs> but we figured that out and then the, uh, after these are, after we mill these out, we can then use our custom fixture to press fit these on like so. And once this is set up, come on, it's got a really tight tolerance. Then we can place this on our, our mill and align it with a L bracket or a PCB bracket. And that way we can um, offset our G code so we can do the top side. So this is what they kind of look like uh, when they're milled. So that's kind of the gist of it, right? Yeah. Um, definitely check out the video on our YouTube channel. Um, it's, it's a nice 10 minute video that breaks down all of the, uh, the process, the recipes, the, the tools, all those things. So it, it's really like a learn guide that's been turned into a video. Um, and so we'll have a full learn guide right up, um, I think by Friday, if not next week. But hey, you can check out the video and download the project files, which are on Thingiverse. And there's a public share link of Fusion 360. Um, so you can check that out. So all of this was designed in Fusion 360 because it has really good CAM workspace tools. So I'm able to switch between the design workspace and the, and the machining workspace um, to create a design that's parametric. So it, I really needed to be able to adjust the offsets for the fixture and be able to use a pattern to lay out um, the fixture. So if I wanted a one by four, or in this case, a three by four layout, it's fairly easy to do so uh, using user parameters. Um, there was a few design iterations I did on the part holder and mainly, um, ideally rather, I would have milled this part holder out of aluminum, 
because aluminum is less likely to warp and you can run into that when you're doing wood. You can run into warps. And there were some instances where um, I designed this fixture with a two millimeter base. You see how thick this is? This is actually five millimeter base because when it was two millimeters, I basically broke the fixture when pulling it off the bed of the, uh, of the CNC mill. The way I like to attach uh, my material, my stock to the bed of the CNC mill is with some nitto tape. And I got myself two, two different sizes of nitto tape. This is a one inch wide and this is a half inch wide. If you're doing some bigger stock, it's actually nice to invest into a bigger roll of tape. So this is some strong double-sided tape and you have to account for the thickness of your tape when you're adding it to your offset in your cam software. Oh, wow. So there's a lot of that going on. What is the thickness of that? This is 2.2 millimeters thick or 200 mm -hmm. microns. That's how thick this stuff is. They both have the same thickness. Again, Nitto tape, N-I-T-T-O tape. This stuff is awesome for uh, fixturing your stock to your bed of your CNC mill. Speaking of the CNC mill, I really like this mill. Um, I hope Phantom Tools makes more of them. It's a small mill. It's got great software. I don't know, it's got a uh, conductive spoil board. So when you probe your tool, it, uh, it probes it really nice so that you don't have to worry about uh, manually probing. When it comes to the material, it has a, an L bracket that you can attach to the, to the spoil board. And with that, you can uh, probe it so that you know exactly where the alignment is of your bracket. So that way I can get um, this thing fixtured down. And when I apply my second G code, I can get an exact um, p placement position uh, for the uh, for the second thing. Man, these are so like. Oh yeah, there's already a thing there. That's why. <laughs> I hope it's not stuck now. And you kind of need it to be tight it. so that. Oh the, yeah, um, there, there's the drill bit would knock it off. Right. One of the things I ran into is um, applying extra offsets to your fixture. So all the geometries that are touching need to have an offset of 0.2 millimeters. That way, um, that way it actually fits because there were some instances where like my keycap wouldn't go all the way to the bottom, which made it not, not mill correctly because the offset wasn't correct. So having offsets in, in your geometry is, is definitely something you want to consider when you're making a fixture yeah, this is good. Also, a palette knife would work better, but it's got such, this particular one doesn't have those offsets, so that's why it's got a bit of a problem here where you're trying to take the damn thing off. There it goes. So you do want to have that offset there. Another thing I ran into was the thicknesses uh, for these, like the shell thickness of the internal geometry. The, this is version one, which is one and a half millimeters thick. And if, when you're milling, you know, it's, it's the exact opposite of printing. So if you are milling away more material, it takes longer. If you're milling away less material, it takes less time. So um, this is a stronger part. It's two millimeters thick. This is a one and a half millimeters thick, or thin rather. So it, it feels like, like the weight difference is, is, there's something there about weight difference. Um, so you don't want to make it uh, too thin, right? So. Although these didn't break or anything, it's, it's still something where like, oh, you want to make it this a little bit thicker so that you aren't machining so much material away. Yeah, so that's what I ended up doing. It's so funny that instead of additive, like 3D printing, right. this is subtractive, so right. it's like the complete the opposite. Less, it's the exact opposite, because if you're printing, you actually don't want it to be that thick because then you're going to spend more time printing it. But if you're milling it, it's okay. <laughs> the less material you take away, the better. So uh, here, here it is, like um, looking at the internal geometry. It just about clears um, the tapered angle for these kale box switches. So it fits like a glove. Can y'all hear my stomach just? <laughs> yeah. So I played around with different types of wood. Um, this is purple heart. This is cherry. This is maple, and this is walnut. Um, I think I really like the cherry. When it comes to milling, um, some of these other ones are fibrous. These two kind of have some good chips. They don't, uh, mm. they, they, they're not as fibrous. So when I'm milling, you can see like 
there's a bunch of strands of, mm -hmm. uh, of, of fibers of wood. So it's a little bit trickier, but the, the, the cherry stuff tends to uh, have finer chips, at least in my experience, and um, it's less prone to warp. I think uh, some of the other wood like, is prone to warp more. Um, but yeah, whatever, it's fine. <laughs> Depending on what it's good to have a going. thick base here. Um, that way, when you're pulling it off the bed, uh, you're not getting, uh, you're, you're less likely to break your fixture when you pull it off the bed. I think what would have been really cool is if I had some holes drilled in here, and that way I can like just drill this yeah. to the spoil board. Um, I don't think I have any, I don't want to do that to the, to the, to the spoil board, so I just figured I'll just stick it down and then use the L bracket to line it perfectly. So that's kind of it in the in a nutshell. Um, definitely check out the video if you haven't already. It's it a lot really, more complicated than that. It really <laughs> breaks down. Yeah. It's so funny for such a simple little thing with the keycap. It is. Uh, yeah, it, it it was quite the journey. Quite, to quite learn. A, uh, a bit of trial and error to get everything perfect. Yeah, to I think get I'm the gonna, recipe down, yes. so to speak. Let me look. Let me walk through the Fusion 360 file. While well, you're loading that up, uh, just taking a look at some of the comments. Yeah, any, Seeker any comments? is saying that looks really cool. I wonder if the right wood PLA would get a similar color and effects. Yeah, Obviously, the milling is way more fun. Uh, on the point of the fibrous on uh, some of the wooden material, uh, that's what we've seen with the PLA wood material. It is like very goopy. Uh, you get lots of stringing. And the in terms of the, the strength, it would not be as strong as the real wood. Um, but that is definitely a route to go. Because yeah. you can still stain it and uh, sand it down. That's right. Yeah. And um, a real quick word about finishing. None of these keys are actually finished, so they're just straight off the... Uh, finishing in terms of applying like a lacquer yes. or oil. Or even oil. super... F like you can still see some of the machining lines there. Um, yeah. You, I could have used a, a finer tool, but I figured a 1 16th inch was... Uh, I was going to do it, yeah. So you can see there, you can still see some of the machining lines, but at a distance, it looks fine. <laughs> but yeah, each one of these keys have different, um, different grains, and they have some really nice uh, patterns. Like each one is very unique, and uh, none of them are the same because it's the way wood is. Yeah, some grains. of them are less, you know, impactful. But I think some some shellac or some maker finish, simple finish would make these really, really pop. And uh, I ran out of time, folks, so I didn't finish any yeah. of them. So they got this kind of, kind of, I don't know, it just feels, what would you, you say the feeling is? No? Yeah, I have it turned off. What would you say the feeling of these are? I don't want to say dusty, because that, that sounds bad. The grain, you can feel the texture, the different stepping that is on here, you can definitely, yeah, you feel, can definitely that. feel it. So it has this very tactile feel to it. And it's of course, the smell grippy. smells like a woodshop class. <laughs> uh, does it still? I guess. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I think when you're adding some finish, you want to be mindful of what the finish is. If it's glossy, if it's going to be tacky, you, you don't want that, I think, when you're touching these. Mm. So there's another reason to kind of don't finish it. But hey, that's up to you all if you want to finish it. Uh, Patrick Ranskin on the YouTube says that the Danish oil. Danish uh, oil. That's a good one. Probably yeah. a good one to try out. Yeah. Yeah, some oils would probably be real nice. Um, linseed oil is another one. Yeah. And uh, Duester is saying that either dogwood, apple, or persimmon would be a great uh, wood for the keys. Yeah. And then, uh, Mr. Saint Bruce is saying that maybe beeswax, mineral oil is the food safe version. Mm, Adding finish in and oh, yeah. enriches the wood. Yeah, oh. that's a good idea. You got enough to try a couple of different ones here. Yep. Again, those are the main four wood types. That's why I have them laid out like that. Mm -hmm. um, where I got my wood from uh, Inventables. They do a good job of selling um, like a six by 12. And I was able to cut these down. And they're all about uh, 13 millimeters. I don't know how many inches that is. 13 millimeters thick. So uh, when, you're, when you're cutting these up, you, you do want to be aware of how big is your spoil board. So you want to cut these down to fit your spoil board. And then um, hopefully they're all surfaced and even so you don't have to mill both sides. I did have to mill both sides on, uh, on a few face. of them. Yeah, yeah face. face. I did have to face, meaning I have to uh, put this on the mill and then just cut away one millimeters, flip it, cut away another millimeters, and hopefully I can get it down to 10 millimeters, 
which is the final thickness of our of our fixture. And then to get these guys, they're actually eight millimeters thick. So I had to surface these a little bit different for the actual keycaps themselves. Yeah, so that's where I get my wood. You can get wood from all over the place, but I like it getting it from Inventables because they ship it pretty fast, sells a pretty good price, and uh, they have all the different types of wood. So again, walnut, maple, purple heart, cherry. And of course, the um, star that is doing the modeling, so to speak, on the the, the uh, macro pad. The macro pad, yeah, which the macro is, pads. hey, it's in stock, y'all. It is did in stock. Did you guys know that it's in stock? We got I did not. 32 in stock Holy of the bare bones. Holy moly. It's the 3x4 key encoder with 32 in LED. stock right now. So if you haven't picked up your macro pad and hey, you're looking, you get that 10% off. You can get 10% off with coupon code. I, we usually tell people to wait until uh, the afternoon for Ask an Engineer uh, so you can see all of the latest, newest products that are released mm -hmm. put into stock but hey if you've been waiting for a macro pad go ahead and jump on on that That's we great. do have a max one per customer oh okay yeah you don't want to buy all 32 make sure that uh, <laughs> okay yeah here. and we also sell the kale box switches i don't know if those are in stock but are they we have like this thing here Oh, they are. They're actually in stock. Hey, I see my it. favorite, of course. Do you like the white the, ones? Uh, the white and the uh, navy blue. Yeah. Uh, I don't think there's a difference between them. I just like the navy blue okay. color. Huh? If you like clicks, I I tend to not like the clicks it's, anymore lately. Yeah, I actually. So the, it's the so blue, funny. the black, and the brown ones are less loud. They're not clicky. They mm -hmm. just have a. I don't know, they just have a feeling, they don't have a sound. Yeah. So we, I, I used mechanical with the clicky, the Cherry MX blues for yeah, years, blues, years, yeah, and right, then like, super right when we started doing keyboard projects. <laughs> you stopped I, using it. <laughs> I switched over to just like a to standard thing, Mac, yeah. Mac to keyboard, you know, the butterfly switch. Yeah, how funny. But no, I, I still use the macro pad for the uh, hot keys and yeah. Yeah, I think I for some fun to, um, camera switching and, and bigger things, editing, designing, that sort of stuff, the, your macro pad really mm -hmm. feels feels good when you're uh, when you're working on something bigger. Cool. What else can I say about it? It's on Thingiverse, the uh, the CAD files. It's the uh, Fusion 360, a step file, and then some STLs of just like, if you want to print it. I mean, some folks say they want to print it, so I do have this yeah, yeah. Um, printable. The um, uh, You probably don't even need supports because it'll catch itself, you know? Yeah, it'll just catch itself. Oh, it's itself. level, yeah. It'll it's definitely completely catch level. It. Yeah, the stem is level, <laughs> it's flush with the uh, with the surface there. Yeah, so check that out, and uh, thanks to everybody like putting comments on the uh, on the video. Don't really get many, so it's nice to see and folks are want to try it on their desktop CNC mill, because there's a bunch. There's a Carbide, there's a Nomad, yeah. there's a Snapmaker, um, and then of course the X Carve. There's so many CNC mills that are getting better software, mm -hmm. more affordable prices. That's awesome. So I'm glad I can share it. some. Interesting projects. That, some recipes. Uh, yeah, some recipes. <laughs> it really does feel like we're cooking here. And uh, these are delicious. <laughs> yeah, they're so great. I, I really like the color of the green and the brown. It gives me like this avocado, like <laughs> uh, sense of avocado. I want some avocado toast. All right, well, any other comments about it? Questions? Again, I'm going to do a full Fusion 360 uh, thing later. We got a lot of stuff to cover in the show, so I'm we're about half an hour in, so I think. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and jump on to. What are you prototyping? Wait, prototyping. Yeah, let me. So last week, or two weeks ago. Uh, take a time code as well. Lamar and PT were checking out the latest superhero movie. Are they superheroes? Call them that, right? They're super villains. Super villains. <laughs> With the uh, oh my god, I forgot the name of the Suicide Squad. The Suicide Squad, and we did the Starro with the Halloween. Uh, and four eyes right, inside ready for the of reveal? the uh, Ninja Flex Starro. Uh, next up is the uh, Rat Catcher prop. Yeah, that is, so uh, the Rat Catcher, she has this wand that attracts all the mice and rats. 
And uh, I think she mind controls all the rats with this. With this device, yeah. So we don't know too much about the, what, the device other than it's like this wand. It's got this glowy dome with this kind of cool cage. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty accurate. Like if you look at it in the movies, you only see it for a couple frames. You see it in three scenes. You do. Each one of which is like about... Obscured by... Uh, literally frames. Right. Not seconds. But you can see frames. like this wire is literally there. So yeah. like all of that worked out really well. So... Mm -hmm. This is super, super good detail so, and ribblies. Uh, as, as much as I uh, am able to check out the screenshots with <laughs> such little air time that it, it got, I was able to get some of the greeblies on mm -hmm. there. So these uh, little screws and stuff that are on the side. A little adjusting then, knobs. They're not real potentiometers. They don't need to be. Yeah. We want to keep it a bit simple so that you're not wiring so much. it really it's it, at this point it turns into a lightsaber once you start mounting i know every time i hold it i i visualize like the, the work, hum yeah. of a lightsaber as That's it's funny. moving it around yeah. but one of the things i'm proud about is just the 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 grid or i, I guess it's like the the, the cage. framing the cage that i um, yeah, was able to print fun. out on and when you're able to get something that is so thin Printing in uh, with support materials that come off super clean. You got def the half of the Death Star. Yeah, on. we got the printer like really dialed in, tiled in yeah, so that's good. Great. So, uh, yeah, that's what excited me about this project, being able to. Yeah, the geometry is super cool. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then the little dome on there goes on there like that. Yeah, so some uh, well, natural obviously, PLA that's uh, great for diffusing. Mm -hmm. It gets a really nice even diffuse. Look at that, it looks so cool. Right. <laughs> so what's inside, what's inside here is the Circuit Playground Express. I think we're using the Blue Fruit version in here. And it's just being used to illuminate the NeoPixels to get this dome nice and uh, diffused. Yeah, and you did really clever. The wiring is hidden inside this post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the wiring from the Circuit that. Playground goes in there. There's some screws here that secure the two pieces together. And then this right here is the... Um, this is the access... Uh, the JST, JST extension. extension. And inside here is the battery. It's a WAPA 2200. Mm -hmm. I love that battery because it's, uh, it's very rigid. So you can drop it and it won't burst into flames. Yeah, so for a lot of the cosplay props, uh, the cylindrical uh, battery is really good for that. And of course, it fits inside the handle for most props. So uh, perfect shape for that. Yeah, man. And then uh, we'll go over more of it uh, yeah. next week. This will be next week's project. And uh, yeah, it's completely modular. So it you is. can get in there and uh, change up your code. Yeah, you don't have right to now glue it's all super... this stuff together. You can still yeah, take it apart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really Essential for of... us when we're filming, we got to document it. Mm -hmm. oh, I can't take it apart because I glued it shut. Yeah, yeah. Hey, it helps to have your, your props modular, even mm -hmm. if it's just screwed together or held together with friction. Yeah, the snap fit for this because it is a prop that you're holding you don't want to like you know squeeze it and like it mm -hmm. moves your um your snap fit little nubs out of the way so yeah it's all screws that hold it yeah, together the no. so still modular but using screw uh, screws just to uh increase the uh probability of you not yeah you know, the breaking it at a uh, rigidity yeah. if you're going to take it to a you know if you want to throw exactly. it in your backpack and not yeah. worry about breaking it mm -hmm. yeah it's, it's or for nice. shipping if you want to uh, oh, send yeah. it like disassembled so you can reassemble ah, it that's a good, good point yeah the battery or something yeah. yeah exactly so what do you guys think do you did you see the movie yet is it something y'all want to check out um i thought it was okay the only gripe of course is i can't show my kids that movie <laughs> yeah it's quite uh <laughs> Quite but other than that, uh, they were a good job. Rats, Mr. except <laughs> the rats. <laughs> except yeah. the, how little airtime or screen time the prop got. Uh, yeah, all it's the pretty props cool. I like the way little. that the, the grid is on there. Yeah, Some it's interesting cool. stuff in terms of uh, the modeling that went into it to mm -hmm. like slice this up and get these. You see how these aren't uh, how it's like twisted, you know, to yeah. have that grid. Um, so yeah, I'll probably add some embossing textures on there because I did see a little bit, uh, which you can't see because she's usually you know completely covering up the entire handle. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what else is underneath here. I think there's like wires or like some sort of like texture Maze emboss. Yeah. yeah, so it's on there. Yeah. But uh, other than that, um, I have to watch it again because I I don't think there's a sound effect. I wanted to add like sound yeah, effects. Like could. I was saying, I was like use, making like you can use accelerometer because it has a built-in accelerometer. Mm -hmm. Um, it has a built-in speaker, yeah. so let me quickly switch over to the Circuit Playground. So those are in stock. If you spend enough money, you'll get a free one, but hey, yeah. you can always get the Circuit Playground if you haven't yet. 
it's kind of Adafruit's like flagship board. It has everything on it that you could ever need for like learning how to work with accelerometers and other sensors. I think there's a temperature sensor as well, a light sensor. Um, it has a, an IR LED for doing like remote control stuff. Uh, yeah, the temperature sensor is there. It's got like so much stuff going mm -hmm. on it. I would definitely though. It runs go probably with the blue fruit version. Not just the blue so, fruit. Uh, once I don't know that's the stack. Blue fruit playground. So uh, Trevor is working on a way it is to stock. send code over to the. It's the same price. Blue fruit. Yeah. I'll probably go with that one. Okay, instead. go with that one because just you so can, that you can get... once you can program this over the air, which is it, it, it's in the works. Yeah. Then you can send your code.py file. You can just edit your code.py file yeah. and like it's I want it red. You can, or soon. you could use the Bluefruit app and change yeah. it to red. But so it's it... cool that you have access to the code file. And you can mm -hmm. change and manipulate it right on a mobile device because we we think most folks will be interfacing with their with their with their dev boards on their phone. It's kind of hard to do that right now, but. It's being worked on. It's being worked on. Uh -huh. Yeah, so it, it'll definitely it make uh, designing it too a lot more easier since. Uh, yeah, you won't have to worry. You don't about have to route embedding. USB. Yeah, that's the thing. Get like the um, you know like a right angle USB mm -hmm. so it's like conforms to the shape of the prop. This way, you can just stay sealed in there. You can like glue it if you want, and then still have access to the code. Yeah. Maybe put like a chi uh, charger on there so you can even wires wireless. Oh, charge that would be it cool. Somehow. Yeah, I have played with uh, yeah. wirelessly charging stuff. Mm -hmm. So we're not there with completely wireless uh, programming and charging I'm uh, just like, for this form factor yeah. anyway. Like Again, one day, like one day. you can swap the board uh, with some of these projects. I'm mm -hmm. looking at like all the learn guides that use the Circuit Playground Express, and there's there's a billion of them. Yeah, there's like swords and potatoes and <laughs> Simon Says's and. It, they can do it all. They can do it all. Put it in a pumpkin, and it's the the flame for you your pumpkin. You could put a screen on it, and now it's your eyeball. Yeah, yeah. So circuit playground. Simon says we got that coming up. Lots of fun stuff. So check them out. Um, circuit playgrounds are in stock. And so is the blue fruit one, and they're both the same price. Yes, oh, these would be cool. Uh, Yanni and the Discord is posting the wireless U, uh, LEDs that Lamar showed off. Yeah, these are really really cool. Yeah, we'll definitely use those for some cool Halloween props. Yeah, if we, if we get them in stock by then. I think so cool. Lots of cool stuff on the horizon. Right. So that's what we're pages of prototyping. I think next week you'll have uh, a video. Yeah, we'll have the guide in the video for this. It's not too complicated, so we should have that sure. out. Uh, it's mainly just the the printing. Yeah, I love that you don't have to, you didn't have to solder anything, right? No, I didn't. That's <laughs> funny. Huh? Awesome. <laughs> Just the uh, extension cord and just plug it into the uh, CPX, and that's it. Plug in just the battery. Just stuff the battery into the tube. Mm -hmm. There you go. And if you want to recharge it, just take out this. And yeah, you can just recharge it from here. Yeah. This is this is literally how yeah, you turn it on and off. That's how you turn it on. Batteries. Off, which is very much how I think the rat know, catcher does it. Maybe I think so. It I wanted, of course, I wanted to have like a slide switch down here somewhere, but mm -hmm. you know, if they have in the prop the wires all hanging out, I'm gonna take advantage of that. Just that. do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm comfortable with that. Cool. Very well done. Mm -hmm. Can't wait for uh, next week. So uh, here you go. Next week will be the rat time. catcher wand. I think, I think that's what it's called when you look it up on the um, what is it called? The RPF. RPF. Yeah. Forms. Prop form. Yeah. yeah. Super cool. cool. Yeah, I think after that, uh, I don't know, probably like the wearable um, Starro that goes on your face or something. Yeah. Maybe we might change it up. Uh, Stuart saying to watch out for rats with that. Yes, I think we have to print out some rubber oh. Ninja Flex rats to go along with the props oh, for the video. <laughs> All right. All right, I think we're ready for shop talk, so let me take a time code. This week's shop talk, I think, is uh, yeah, taking a we... look at the Fusion setup for doing the keycaps or for milling. I just realized I'm not doing a live record, or I'm not uh, oh, that's recording fine. on that's this. Fine. That's it's, fine. You're going to have to take it from Twitch. Yeah, it, that, it's better that way. It, it's faster. It's faster. All right, cool. All right, this week's Shop Talk. I have some fun. Uh, it's, it's a bit of a community mix as well. So let me queue up everything I need. All right, ready. All right, for Shop Talk this week on the Adafruit blog, I saw this come through. This is a blog post by Ann Barella and Ann posted up a Simon Says game with the Adafruit macro pad. So I, this has sparked my curiosity and I said, I would love to play Simon Says on the macro pad. So here's a link to the form. 
So I click on that, and I see our, uh, uh, Rebecca Wilson posted up this. She says, I made a Simon Says Game with a macro pad. Uh, it's my first Ada box and my first time writing a program that isn't a book question. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I learned a lot. It is really ready to come up with a new game. As it turns out, I really don't care what Simon Says. In case everybody wants to try, <laughs> here's my code. So shout out to you, Rebecca. This is really, really fun, well, well written piece of code. And down here, we can see that uh, another fellow updated the game with uh, a little bit of a tweak where it's a little bit faster. Um, so I, I tried out both, and I'm quite happy with both. So shout out to Rebecca, and um, the form user's name is uh, Kirksen. So Kirksen did a kind of a remix of it. But here it is, I have it running. So it's a memory game. Start To start, press the encoder button, so I'll go ahead and press that. I'm already at game over, but uh, <laughs> I think I might have messed it up. Yeah, let me reboot it. Sorry, folks. <laughs> I might have uh, something else running. Oh, yeah. You can see there, my uh, USB is like reloading it. All right, cool. Aw. <laughs> that was the one right now. Yeah, right I think I messed up. <laughs> so it's very much like a Simon Says game. It gives you a beep, and you have to repeat the pattern. So not only does it light up the NeoPixels, but it also gives you a sound effect, because there's a built-in speaker. And it gives you, the LED tells you, you know, the text and the level that you're on. I got up to level nine, which I'm super proud about. <laughs> but again, shout out to Kirkson and Rebecca for coming up with such a fun game. I like this more as a gaming platform, to be honest, because like the buttons are right the, in there. The, the, anyway, yeah, it's really really fun. You you could see all the colors. You hopefully you can hear it as well. I don't think you could change the uh, the sound, right? Like the volume. But hey, it's got a built-in piezo in the back there. You've got your built-in NeoPixel, so if you do want to make a game, you have so many different options. You've got all these buttons, you got this rotor encoder, it's a button as well, and your OLED display. What a great little you know, platform. And if you wanted to add more stuff, more breakouts, you got your STEM QT, so you could do I2C um, peripherals over here in Daisy Chain them if you want to do something crazy. But this is so fun. Like I really like anything with sounds and, and uh, game memory matching. It's so fun. So uh, check it out. It's the blog post is on the Adafruit blog post. And again, huge shout out to Rebecca and Kirkson for uh, bouncing back these uh, these awesome codes. I, I literally just grabbed the code <laughs> and put it on the board in like under a minute. And uh, it's a very well doc, uh, very well commented as well. Like this should be on GitHub. Like put this on GitHub so folks can uh, can uh, enjoy it there. Oh, it's only on the forum. It's only Oh, man. So I just posted the link to that if Thank anybody you. wants yeah. to try it out. Please do try it out. It's so fun. And, and, and give Rebecca good, good uh, encouragement good, good, good of putting it on This is her first thing. It's the first Ada box. So it's so, oh, wow. it's so good. <laughs> All right. So that is, uh, that is a bit of the shop talk. I think we have another shop talk segment. Do we know? Another shop talk. Do we have notes? Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> yes, we have the Hagaday Halloween contest yes. to promote. Oh, how I There's can a forget. couple of more entries added. These are so cool. This is more amazing. Halloween let me, coming up. Let me tell you real quick. Okay, so head over to the link that we posted, uh, or you can search on Hagaday IO. It's the Halloween Hack Fest that's going on right now. Uh, the deadline for this is, I believe, October 11th. So you have plenty of time to get your projects in. But the name of the game is you create a project on Hackaday.io, and if you use Adafruit gear, your your prize is doubled. How cool. So that is awesome. You uh, the, the prize is money with a DigiKey, so it's like credits for the DigiKey store. They, they carry everything, yeah. so you're going to have lots of fun there. Um, there's more awards and stuff that, that, that's there, but check them out. 
Uh, I just want to look at some of the, uh, the entries. So far, I see five of them, and one of them that really caught my eye was this adorable Baby Yoda. Do we still call him Baby Yoda? I guess we call him the <laughs> child. But uh, this is like a Disney doll, I believe, that you could purchase. And uh, this fellow uh, completely 3D printed uh, these fixtures and, and parts for these servos. I believe they're servo motors. And basically, it's an animatronic Baby Yoda. I mean, look at the movements. It's so adorable, creepy, and like <laughs> all the things together. Look at the thing. It's so good. Look how fast it is, too. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like he's puppeteering it. Yeah. It's really, really cute. And he's walking. He's walking. <laughs> oh my god. So check out. Um, look at look how perfect this photo is. He's like happy. You're giving me a skeleton in life. <laughs> so this is an excellent project. I'm biased, of course, but uh, if you have, uh, you know. Oh, uh, your is my audio. No, no, no. The screen. What's wrong with it? It is there. Maybe for a second, yeah, mm. in the beginning of the segment. But yeah, check it out. There's lots of fun um, submissions. Even if you're not entering the contest, I think it'd be fun to just look at some of the submissions for inspiration. Uh, I know I'm inspired. Like, I want to get into the making a robot now with like eight servos. And there's some other really cool ones. Here's like a, a scary cat with some red eyes, probably moves his head or something. Yeah, I think there's some servos in there yeah. as well. Yeah, of course. And of course, this is going to be a hard one for judging because like they're just yeah. getting super awesome. Uh, yeah, we, we showed this one last week, I think, the, uh, the talking skeleton, which is pretty cool. So check this out. Um, good luck and, and have fun, right? I think that's the, the way to say it. The Halloween Hack Fest going on now. Right. Halloween, it's the maker holidays. So all right, is that all the shop talk? I guess one last thing, promote our CAD files. If you are looking to design an enclosure or a robot with Adafruit parts. We got lots of 3D models of just about every uh, CircuitPython board. The, the trinkets, the cutie pies, the feathers, the one by fours, the displays, even keycaps and other things like that. You can check out our GitHub repository with all of those lovely CAD files in different various formats as well. So if you are using something other than Fusion 360, you can use our step files or STL files or any other number of files that you want to re-export them as. Check them out. We'll have a link in the description of this video. And that is your shop talk. All right. Let's go ahead and jump into this week's Community Makes. All right. This week, we have a time lapse every Tuesday. Pedro finds something on the, on the, on the whatever verses and uh, prints something from the community that he thinks is really cool. This week, tentacles. I think it's pretty much Halloween themed tentacles. with having the tentacles and with uh, uh, the other uh, show that we watch from uh, uh, What If, Marvel's What If. Oh. Uh, of course, the, I forget the name of the dude, the octopus guy comes through the portal. There's an octopus guy? Yeah. Um, this is the Carter Dalu episode, like, like uh, Captain Carter, right? Episode? Yeah, uh-huh. Kafulu or something? Something like that. This came up on the Thingiverse, and I thought, hey, that looks pretty similar to what is going on in terms of like shows we watch. So right. it's a really cool tentacle pen holder. If you guys use a Wacom pen or something as a mouse, as I do, using the mouse hurts my hand for an extended period of time. It's a really cool way to hold your Wacom pen. Does it hold the screwdriver? Uh, I mean, you can it's adjust the, the, diameter. Um, the diameter of the hole, but yeah, you can hold it. Okay. Nice little holder. Probably put a couple of them in there since it's uh, pretty big. This is uh, made for the bigger uh, pen sizes that the Wacom's have. But yeah, like the detail, detail on yeah. all of the suction cups and uh, prints without support, like this top part here. Um, this was actually printed quite a while ago. I have like a, a, backlog. a backlog of time lapses and uh, try to chew the time when, uh, you know, it lines up with things that are going in pop culture yeah, it's, or it's uh, themed yeah. holidays or something. So uh, the Print quality on this one is not as you know up to par as uh, I've been able to adjust the um, the all of the settings on the printer, but nonetheless it's uh, pretty good uh, in terms of uh, you know not ha not having so much too much uh, stringing going on with it. It kind of contribute. It kind of 
that adds to the yeah. design. Like it has a little bit of a uh, zits and stuff like that. But hey, mm -hmm. that's kind of the texture of the skin. Yeah, this is like rainbow filament. So like this, what's going on? Yeah, this is rainbow filament, and it, I caught it right at a perfect timing when sure it's did. going from like uh, it's like a coppery red into a green. So it kind of has that illusion of oh, did this tentacle just you know straight up eat somebody? Green and, and browns. Uh, it's, they yeah, kind of match. It's like a reddish they, brown. Yeah, greens and browns go well together. Mm -hmm. Really do. Um, but yeah, great, great job on the color choice. Yeah, you got the. I didn't know at first because it, it it looks like it the colors. It doesn't slowly look, fades. Yeah, it slowly fades in and it gives you like this gradient, which mm -hmm. is like you did a multi material, you painted it or something. But no. So let's look <laughs> on Thingiverse. Um, this is a, a thing that you can download by uh, Bidu Matteo, Thingiverse user. Uh, Bidu Matteo posted this up, and uh, you can see a render of it. And uh, it comes in what different sizes, or you can adjust the size yourself. Uh, you can adjust the size yourself. Cool. So shout out to Bidu Matt Dio for yeah. posting that up on Thingiverse. Very fun pen holder, stylistic. Uh, Stuart uh, saying that it looks like little baby Starro. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, that's. They can definitely add more textures on there with uh, painting all the suction cups and all that. Yeah. A cool uh -huh. little way to hold on to your pen. All right. Cool, so that's this week's Timeless Tuesday. We got some more community makes that came in through today, so let's take a look at some of them. Huge shout out to a Tectile on, or Tectite, on Thingiverse for posting their make of the Raspberry Pi B Plus face case. Yes, the face case. This is a fun Raspberry Pi case. It has a face. <laughs> I don't know what else to say about it. It's good for octoprint and things like that, so check it out. So many folks have made this, I'm so happy. It was a bit of my thing to add a face to a case. Um, 2014. <laughs> uh, and it's inspired by uh, Domokun. Do y'all remember Domokun? No? If you don't, then uh, sorry. <laughs> All right, another one we have this week. It's the LED sand toy. Remember this one? It's a giant um, matrix. Pedro, you remember this. You designed this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so here you go. It's huge. Look at these big. Was inspired by like the speak and spell or something like that? Phil B. It was inspired by the speaker spell, I think. Yeah, Phil B. Because he did the code and Pedro did the uh, the handle design and the bracket design. So, uh, in the description here, uh, Thingiverse user Amvoxite says, I reverted the buttonhole sizes needed for the Adafruit buttons and made the handles thinner so that we can screw on the fastening nut. I love when mm. folks like redesign it mm -hmm. to fit uh, a different button mm -hmm. or different hardware. Different hardware or for their you know, purpose. This in this case, it was uh, wanted to make it thinner so that they could screw it in. But yeah, it's a super fun uh, project. I think it uses uh, the uh, which accelerometer, the LIS 3D mm -hmm. perhaps. Yes. Yep. Is this updated? I think this is like updated. We didn't have Stemma back then. I know. That's oh. cool. Oh. Yeah. So they remade the bracket so that it fits oh. all this stuff. But look at that. You have a compartment for uh, this giant beefy battery because mm -hmm. you definitely need that. And it's powered by the Raspberry Pi. I completely forgot about that. This was this this predates a lot of things, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. It's but it is a Raspberry Pi Zero with the uh, the speaker bonnet or the RGB matrix bonnet. Yeah, I think this is like Lamar's first RGB matrix thing, and it has a power boost for doing the five volts, and you can recharge it. It's quite a build, but it's still easy, I think, even for today's standards. So I printed it on a Prusa Prusa clone, and um, yeah, there you go. So shout out to uh, Mbox Tight. I don't think I ever should post in their make of the LED Matrix Sand Toy. All right, we got another one. This is, remember Nefertiti? Well, somebody made the Nefertiti bust. We turned it into a planter. But yeah, this was back in the day. What, what year was it, 2016? Like, some rogue folks took a 3D scan. Mm. We, we allegedly took a 3D scan of the Nefertiti bust. Um, and like, they uploaded the super high resolution. Uh, STL model of, of Nefertiti's bust. Uh, we took that, uh, what, what do you call it when you... Hollowed it out inside of a... No, no, you, you take away the detail. The oh, um... Called? Gosh, my brain. <laughs> you, uh, you optimize it for less faces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What the hell is it called? Decimate this... There's a word for it. God, we're dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Help me out. Uh, um, we lowered the poly count on we it. We lowered the polygon count so that it wouldn't, so that your slicer wouldn't crash when you open it. Because this was like a hundred gigabyte, a hundred megabyte file. So mm -hmm. we brought it down, shelled it out, turned it into a 
plant her and we put some carnivorous plants in her head, <laughs> which is a great, great use of it. So uh, think of our user here, uh, Epulga. I'll post it up there, make of the Nefertiti bust. And it looks great in this uh, shiny copper-esque filament. Yeah, this is really good demo test for uh, if you got a big build plate, yeah. a way to maximize the whole uh, size of your printer. Yeah. And you get a nice little uh, yeah, give her, out of that. Give her an afro, that'd be super dope. Oh, uh, like and it, it looks like it was printed on an Ender, though Ender printers are awesome, so check mm -hmm. those out, Creelty. Now you can see a bunch of the other makes there. You can yeah. do a, uh, do some, I think somebody like did some painting on it as well. Yeah, we printed it in wood filament, huh? Yeah, yeah. I think this was the, was it cork? What was it? Oh, yeah. Oh, was it the hemp filament? The hemp filament? Remember the beer filament? There was a oh, beer yeah. filament. There's <laughs> so many filaments. There was a year of just like the year of, of different types of, yeah. yeah. Every year there was a new, every month there was a new flavor of filaments. But people tend to like turning it into a planter, so I thought that was fun. All right. We got one more or two more here. I think it's one more. Yeah, one more here. This is from John Gallifer, professor at Boston so cool. University. Um, made uh, the 8x8. Uh, NeoPixel matrix square display, and here he's showing uh, the difference between no black LED acrylic and some LED acrylic. It's quite the effect. Uh, black LED acrylic is something that we love so much that we stock this acrylic. I don't know if it's still in stock, so let's check. Just type in black LED. There it is. Blam. We still sell it. Get the 12 by 12 version. You can cut it using a scoring knife or a CNC mill. Uh, it's 10 bucks for a 12 by 12 sheet, and it's a 0.2 millimeter stick, which makes it great for uh, really popping those colors out. Uh, we love this stuff so much, and um, we've used it in several projects. Shout out to for Char uh, Charlene uh, for, for uh, you know, that was the first person I saw mm -hmm. use this stuff. And she just used it not too long ago. On, right. I think we talked about it last on week. On keycaps, yeah, yeah, which is really cool. All right, so that is the, I think that's the last make. Right. Yeah. Is there one John Jeff, or did we talk about that last week? That was last week. week, yeah, Jeff. The key cap, the yep, uh, yep. remix that he so did. So thank you everybody for posting your makes. It's always fun to see folks making things. Yeah. Even if it's not ours, it's always good to see. And that is Community Makes. Community makes. All right. Well, celebrating eight years. Here we are. We're still Yay. here. Don't forget the coupon code is NP thanks. It'll get you negatively tempers. positive thanks. No, no <laughs> and Pedro thanks. That'll get you 10% off on your Adafruit order. Does not work on gift certificates or uh, I.O. subscriptions. Mm, uh, yes. Software or something. I don't think we sell software I don't think anymore. We're doing software anymore, but yeah. we used to sell Eagle like seven. Isn't that crazy? Oh yeah. yeah. So now it's just in the past eight it, years. It's literally in Fusion 360. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow, the times change these eight years. Yeah. But don't go anywhere uh, later tonight. Full set of shows starting off with uh, Show and Tell. We'll be there on tonight. And if you want to come on and show on, show off some of the cool projects you guys are working on, doesn't have to be completed. We like seeing work in progress uh, projects. Mm -hmm. Or if you just want to show off your um, work your space, space or something that you're working on in mm -hmm. the new CNC machine, perhaps. Yeah. yeah Pretty yeah, cool. Yeah. Your modular synth. I'd love to see what kind of synths you're cooking up. Mm -hmm. We'll post the StreamYard link in the Discord over at discord.gg slash Adafruit. That's right. A couple minutes before the show starts, you can get in line and show off your awesome project. That's right. And uh, it's hosted this week by, I think, Lamar and Phil. So oh, yeah. check them out. We hosted last week, and that was a lot of fun. Thanks for everybody coming in last week. And then right after show and tell is Ask an Engineer with Lamar and Phil. Full hour of all of the cool uh uh, projects being worked on, all of the behind the scenes at the office, and of course, all of the new products coming out. So definitely stick around for that. And Thank you everybody for your comments. Another coupon on, uh, code. Sorry. What's the coupon code? Oh, right, right, right. On Ask Engineer, there's, Ask a, there's a coupon code. I wonder if it's the same one. Oh. That'd be cool. <laughs> That'd be easy. <laughs> that would be easy. We like, sometimes it's fine to be easy. And then uh, tomorrow, another set of shows coming up. Uh, with John Park's workshop. Yeah, tune episode in. 201. Yeah. Amazing, John. Everybody's getting up there on the uh, amount of projects and shows. So awesome. And then I think uh, Friday. Friday, Scott just celebrated five years, too. And, five um, years. Yeah, right? Yeah, so every Friday at 2 p.m. Pacific time, 
What, what time is that? 5 p.m. Easter yeah. time. Yeah. On Fridays. Come on. The most popular out. live stream show, I, I believe. Yeah, like, yeah. Scott's is doing it up, man. This is great. Really, uh, really deep Watch dive. him as he uh, really gets into the uh, nooks and crannies of uh, getting the next CircuitPython build out. Yeah, and we just had CircuitPython 7 Beta 0 released, mm -hmm. I believe, yesterday. So shout out to Dan and uh, everybody else on the team. Cool. Cool. Yeah. And then uh, Sundays, sometimes Saturdays, from the desk of Lady Ada. Check out the uh, one of the most popular uh, segments on there, I think, is... Uh, uh, DigiKey's a great search. Uh, yeah. Everybody needs to swap out whatever component they're using. So Lamar goes through, takes suggestions on a That's part right. that you might be looking for, and finds alternatives. So yeah, so if you yourself out. are knee-deep into your design, you're designing a PCB or a product, and you just can't find a replacement for your part, ask Lady Ada. She will go out and research and find parts for you, which is amazing. So check her out. You can. Uh, where do you let her know? Probably email or... Uh, I think on the Discord. Anywhere, yeah. yeah. Like, you'll find it somehow. Yeah, Discord is a good way to do it. Where's my Discord thing? All right. Well, that's going to do it for the show, folks. Huge. Thank you, everybody in the chat room. Yes, we really appreciate your kind we words. We are... Yeah, we definitely love doing what we do here. That's so why we're eight years old. Yeah, we're going to keep doing, doing it. Long, yeah. <laughs> Even if we like won the lottery or something, we'd still show up and do this every single week. <laughs> yeah, dude, can I tell you what I would want to do if I win the lottery? Hmm. I would invest a lot of money in making Circuit Playground the, the kid show again. I would love for that to just Continue, be the yeah. just be the Sesame Street mm -hmm. of our of this upcoming generation. Yeah, yeah, that's what uh, I would do if I had all the money. <laughs> I would make a kid show with puppets about electronics <laughs> and making stuff and what it means to do that. So much fun. All right, thank you all again from the bottom of my heart. Uh, it's so awesome we to see all your guys' too. comments. And yeah, we'll be here next week. Uh, we'll be on Show and Tell, so definitely check that out. And until then, remember to make a great day. Bye, folks. See you later tonight. Later tonight.